Today's experiment, we're going to compare nine different objects and we're going to image them using the plan in the C-Star app. And we're gonna run the plan on the C-Star S30 and on the S50 simultaneously at the same time. So the conditions are the same. They're about four feet apart from each other. And we're going to compare the results of these images. Um, we know that there are reasons why you may prefer an S30 over an S50 or vice versa, but this experiment is just looking at the quality of the pictures. We're also going to compare the efficiency of the image saving for each one. And so, I mean, keep in mind they are about four feet apart, so they're not identical, but pretty close. And so we're going to compare the save rate of the exposures. They're both set up on equatorial mode and they're both set to 20 second exposures. And we're going to see which one is the most efficient at saving the exposures. And then we'll also look at the pictures and see if we can see differences. I did not do any mosaic mode. I didn't do any enhancing. There was a couple that I did crop just to enlarge them so they were more visible. But outside of that, there was no additional processing of any sort. So these are straight off of the sea stars and I'll identify which one is which as we go. So we have opened the sea star app and I've, on this one I've connected to the S30, but I've done the same thing on the S50. So all I've done is I have created a plan. So you um, click on the plan. And if you go in here, what I'm going to use is the November Hubble challenge objects, just because that'll give me a good list. And this is the list. It's M31, M32, M33, M74, C65, C56, C23, M110 and C14. And so that is the plan that we're going to execute. I've already actually done it. I'm just recording this after the fact. And you can see from this screen, all of those boxes are green. That tells me that they all succeeded. They also all succeeded on the S50. So that's good news. We'll have some data to use as we um, do these. You can see in the beginning, I was imaging for an hour until I got to C65. And that one is a really small one and pretty low. So I did that one for a little bit longer. And the, um, two, the C23 and M110, I also did those a little longer, but the others are at an hour long. And I think this one was at two hours. Let's see. Um, let's see. Yeah, the C65, they were at two hours. So three of the objects were at two hours and the other six were at one hour a piece. And so that gives us an idea of how much exposure time, you know, we're not in this experiment, we're not shooting for long exposure, fabulous images that we're going to print and enter into contests. This is just to experiment, compare between the two uh, C stars and compare their save rate on multiple objects. And so that's what we're gonna do with this plan and, and I'll share the results. All right, our first object is M31, the Andromeda galaxy. Everybody, every self-respecting astronomer has to do M31. But um, this is the results. Um, I did do this one first in, in the plan. And I'm guessing that because it was just barely after sunset that might have played into the saved exposure rate. But the S30 saved 32 minutes out of the 60 minutes possible for a rate of 53% of save rate. The S50 only saved 12 minutes and at that makes it a 20% save rate, which is abysmal. And so I'm, I'm guessing that that had to do with just that I did it first and it was right after sunset. So maybe it wasn't quite dark enough. 
I'm not exactly sure because that rate for the S50 is much lower than I have expected and imaged in the past with the S50. So I don't know what the difference was, but that's what we got. You can see that Andromeda in the S30 is much bigger, and you can see the secondary M32 in that view of the S30. Um, the S50, the field of view is not quite as big, so you don't see that in the S50's view. But that shows you a difference in the field of view between the S30 and the S50. Okay, so here's M32. The S30 saved 52 minutes, so that was 87% save rate, so that was fabulous. The S50 saved 43 minutes, which is 72% of a save rate. So the S50 is not keeping up on the save rate as well as the S30. Um, but if you look at these pictures, the S50 M32 is right there in the middle, and it identifies it a little bit better. When you look at the S30, the M32 is in the middle, but it looks kind of just like another star because the field of view makes that object a little smaller because it's filling a bigger area of the screen. And so there are some advantages to the S50 on this one. So this is M33, the Triangulum Galaxy. The S30 saved 52 minutes again. So again, 87% of the exposures were saved. The S30 only saved 33 minutes at 55% of exposures saved. Well, this one you can see quite a big difference in the final image. Well, of course that has to do with the time that they're saved. So, you know, you're not comparing one triangulum galaxy at 52 minutes to another triangulum galaxy at 52 minutes because of the different exposure time we ended up with a different result so the s30's image is much better because it has almost double the amount of exposure saved why that is the case i don't know so um not sure why the s50 is not saving at the same rate um, it could be that my S50 is a year older than my S30, so maybe it's not tracking quite as smoothly or as well. I, I'm not really sure, but for this experiment, the S30 won out. So this is Messier 74. It is the Phantom Galaxy. The S30 saved 51 minutes out of 60 for an 85% save rate. The S50 saved 38 minutes for 63% save rate. Well, from the get-go, this looks like the S30 did not do very well. But really, this was me. I had a snafu. What I did is I cropped the S50 version and saved it in a crop version. And so it's bigger than the S30 vision. So I'll enlarge that S30. I just wanted to show you the um, icon, the watermark stuff at the bottom before I enlarge that. So here's the S30 image blown up to be about the same size as the S50. Well, what's interesting about this image is you can really see the difference in the sensor on this one. Both of these are JPEG files, but the image on the left, the S30 image, you can see it's starting to degrade a little bit more. Well, that's probably because of the differences in the sensor of the S30 versus the S50. The S30 sensor just isn't quite as strong and powerful as the S50s. And so it shows a lot of the difference here. So this is Messier 110. This is a elliptical galaxy near Andromeda. And so it does capture a lot of the light from Andromeda. You can see that the S50 did not do well on this one. This is the first object that I devoted two hours to because it is pretty small and I know it's pretty close to Andromeda that picks up a lot of that light. But the S30 did pretty great. It did 87% save rate whereas the S50 only did a 32% save rate. And you can see from the image that the placement of the S50 must be gathering light from something else. What 
whether it's something reflecting off of a house or I'm not sure exactly. Maybe it's reflecting off the S30 that's sitting next to it. I'm not really sure where that light's coming from, but the same circumstances, but the S30 definitely excelled on this one. All right, the next one is C14. This is a double cluster in the constellation Perseus. The S30 saved 58 minutes, so 97%. That was fabulous. The S50 was abysmal, 42%. You know, and on the S50, it, because of the field of view, you can really only see one of those star clusters. And so the S30, again, wins out on this one. This is Caldwell 23. It's also NGC 891. It is the Silver Sliver Galaxy. And I, this is another one that I messed up and I enlarged it on the S50 before I saved it. And so I will enlarge the S31 to be the same size so we can compare. But the S30 only saved 66% of the exposures. Whereas the S50 only saved, it saved 69% of the exposures. So the S50 saved a better save rate on this object. But as I look at the images with the S30 enlarged, it looks like the S30 captured a little bit more light. And so um, I'm sure if we zoomed in, the S30 would start losing some of its quality. Um, because of the sensor differences, but the S30 did a great job, but they relatively close to the same amount of save rate. The next one up is a little bit more obscure. This is C56. It is a skull nebula, and I have never done this one before, but it's pretty interesting. I might want to do this one again with longer time, but the S30 saved 70% and the S50 saved only 42%. I want to enlarge these, though, so we can look at them a little bit closer to see if we can see the skull and why it's called that. So I'm going to enlarge these. Well, I can see the two eyes. I don't know that it screams at me skull, but it's pretty in a, a pretty interesting one. The S30 did a better job with more exposures saved. This one is Caldwell 65. It is the Silver Coin Galaxy. This is another new one to me. And you can see the difference in the field of view on these ones because the S30, the image comes up looking like it's smaller, but it, it's really because of the field of view. The S30 saved 85% and the S50 saved 76%. Here's the S30 image enlarged to be about the same size as the S50. And these turned out pretty nice. The um, S30 image, you can see that there's a difference in them for sure. All right, so we've reached the end of this experiment. We did nine objects. Only one time did the C-Star S50 win in the percentage of saved exposure rates. So the S30 did much better than the S50 as far as save rate goes. Um, same exposure time, same basic location. They're on separate tripods, so they are, you know, a few feet away from each other. But the S30 did fabulous, and the S50 was pretty marginal. And so I don't know exactly what the difference was, because usually the S50 can compete pretty well. Um, perhaps it's that my S50 has been used a lot for a year, and Maybe the gears aren't quite moving as freely or as efficiently as they used to. I'm not sure. Um, maybe what I should do is rotate the tripods and run the plan again and see if we get the same result. I'm not sure if that would help or not. But as far as save rate efficiency, the S30 is the clear winner. As far as image quality, well, if you're looking at the images I took, the S30 was the clear winner, but that's mainly because it saved more. So it's not really a fair comparison 
If you had the same number of exposures with the S30 and the S50, you could compare the images a little easier. But when you're only saving 40 to 50% of the exposures, of course, the image is going to be not as good as the one that saved 80 to 90%. So I don't know that it's easy to quantify which image quality was better. The sensor on the S50 is definitely better. And you can see that as we start to enlarge the pictures and things. But as for this experiment, I would say the winner is the S30 in this experiment. So this was a good variety of types of objects. Um, a good look at the difference between the field of view for the S30 versus the S50. Um, it was a, a good experiment to see which one was doing a better at the save rate. Um, I was surprised. I actually thought the S50 was a little bit more efficient than the S30. So if you're looking into getting a C star, the S30 is totally adequate. The, I think the only advantage on the S30 is that sensor size. So if you're going to do post-processing, you probably want that higher sensor to capture more of the detail light that comes through. But other than that, the S30 is completely adequate and does a fine job. And so that's a, a good option too. So um, either one you choose is perfect. If you haven't yet pulled the trigger and bought yourself a C-Star, we do have an affiliate link. It's in the description box. We appreciate anybody that uses it. It just tells C-Star that we're giving good content that is helpful to them. Um, we appreciate everybody watching. Um, hope everybody can get out there and have clear skies. We're wishing clear skies for everybody. Send us your comments. Thanks for watching.